All right, so the first thing we want to talk about or remind ourselves about is given a graph of a function or a line specifically, we want to be able to write down the equation of the line in slope-intercept form. So to remind us, slope-intercept form is the form y equals to mx plus b, where m is our slope and b is the y-coordinate of the y-intercept. So basically the two things we need to know then in order to find the graph or the equation of this line is we need the slope and the y-intercept. So the y-intercept always has the form 0 comma b and is the point where our graph crosses the y-axis. So that's going to be the point right here which in this case is 0 comma 2. So that would imply that our b value is exactly the value of 2. The next thing we would need is the slope. And if we pick any two points on our line, we can count our rise over our run. So our rise in this case would be 4, and our run would be 1. So that would give us our slope is our rise divided by our run, which is going to be 4 over 1, which gives us 4. So then putting those two pieces of information together, we would have the equation of our line is 4 times x plus our b value, which is 2. So we would get 4x plus 2. All right, it's now your turn. So let's go ahead and have you guys get started on you try number one. All right, so we do the same thing. We identify our y-intercept as 0, negative 1, which would give us the b value of negative 1. And then we pick any two points and count off our slope. So our run this time would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And we went down 1, 2, 3, so our rise would be negative 3, run positive 6, so our slope is negative 3 over 6, which is negative 1 half. So the equation of our line would be negative 1 half x plus a negative 1, which would just be minus. So doing the same thing, but this time instead of being given a graph, we're just explicitly given some values. We want to find the slope-intercept equation of the line with slope negative two-thirds and y-intercept zero, negative four. So once again, this is really the same problem that we've been doing. So if our slope is negative two-thirds, we know m is negative two-thirds. And we're given our y-intercept, so zero comma b. So that would imply that our b value this time is going to be negative four. So then this would be exactly the same problem we just did. So y would equal negative 2 over 3 x plus a negative 4, so minus 4. So if we know the slope and the intercept of a line, we then know exactly what that equation is going to be.
All right. So once again, we would get, not in red though, y equals 5 sevenths x plus a negative 4, so minus 4. So this time we are going to change the data that was given, which is just going to require us to add an extra step. So if we are given two points, instead of a point in the y-intercept, the first thing we would have to do is calculate our slope. And we want to recall our slope formula. Is equal to um, y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1, or in function notation, f of x2 minus f of x1 all over x2 minus x1. Both of those being equivalent, and it doesn't matter which one of these is point 0.1 and which one of these is point 0.2 when we use this formula. So for no reason whatsoever than I feel like it, I'm going to call 6, 3.1, and I'm going to call 0, negative 4.2. If you called 0, negative 4.1 and 6, 3.2, you will get the same answer in the end. So that would give me negative 4 minus 3 all over 0 minus 6 which is negative 7 over negative 6, which is going to be positive 7 sixths. And then this time, we were also given the y-intercept. So we happen to note that 0, negative 4 is the y-intercept. So 0, comma, b. So once again, our b is going to be negative 4. So that would give us the equation of our line is y equals 7 sixths x take away 4. So let's suppose a couple of things. We're going to work this problem again, and I'm going to invert the order which I did the points. So if I called 0, negative 4.1, and I called my other point 63.2. Nothing's going to change. But the other thing I want to emphasize is, well, what if I didn't notice that I had the y-intercept 0, negative 4? And I, say, used my other point. Well, let's calculate our slope first off. So y2 minus y1 is going to be 3 minus a minus 4 all over 6 minus 0. A minus minus leads to a plus positive. So we get 7 over 6 once again for our slope. So now suppose we wanted to use this point. We have two possibilities that we can use. So method 1 is we have the formula y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. And method two is we stick with the formula that we've been using, which is y equals mx plus b. Once again, it's dealer's choice. Either formula that I use is going to yield the same correct solution at the end. We have lots of choices. So using method one and our point that we are going to be using this time was six comma three, we would put that into our formula. So y minus 3 is equal to 7 over 6 times x take away 6. If we open our parentheses by distributing, we have y minus 3 equals 7 6 x, 7 6 times negative 6. The 6 is reduced out, and we get negative 7. We then add 3, add 3, and we get y is equal to 7 over 6 x take away 4. We'll notice that's the same answer we got up here. We could also do this problem by using the slope and the point that we know. 
So we have an x, and we have a y, and we have our slope. So it would be 3 is equal to 7 over 6 times our x value, which is 6, plus b. Once again, our 6s reduce out, and we get 3 equals 7 plus b. We minus 7, we minus 7, and we get negative 4 is equal to b once again. So then y is equal to 7, 6, x, take away b. So we have found the equation of this line in three different ways. Regardless of which method we use, we will always get the same solution. So the real moral of this story is there are many, many ways to get from A to B. And which method we choose is really immaterial as long as we don't make any computational mistakes along our journey. So one thing you're going to hear me say a lot this semester is that I am goal-oriented as opposed to path-oriented. So if you're using a correct method to navigate from A to B, that's great. We'll talk more about efficiency and some other things when we get to other sections later on. But our goal is to solve problems, and that's really what we need to be focusing on. And resolve this problem. So once again, we're given two points. So I'll be boring this time and do them in order, point one, point two. So m is equal to 7 take away 0 all over 2 minus a minus 3. That's going to give us 7 over 2 plus 3, which is 5. So our slope is 7 fifths. This time, we can't use the shortest method because we weren't given the y-intercept. This point is actually the x-intercept, right? So our two choices are either y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, or we can still use this in the method the same way as we did above. So either way, we're going to have y minus 0 is equal to 7 fifths times x minus a minus 3. So that would be y is equal to 7 fifths x minus minus is plus positive. So that would give us 3 times 7 is 21 over 5. Or in our other equation, we would do the same thing, and it doesn't matter which point we use. We would have 0 is equal to 7 over 5 times negative 3 plus b, which would give us 0 equals negative 21 over 5 plus b. So we add 21 over 5 to both sides, yielding b equals 21 over 5. So y equals 7 over 5x plus 21 over 5 again, and we get the same equation once again, either way that we resolve that. All right. So the next thing we need to talk about is a concept that we're probably more familiar with geometrically than we are algebraically, which is parallel, perpendicular, and neither. So in geometry, we say two lines are parallel if when extended infinitely in both directions the lines do not intersect. So 
So geometrically speaking, that means if we take two lines and we extend them infinitely in both directions, that they would never meet. Well, that's our geometric definition, and it will not serve us very well in an algebra class. So we need the algebraic equivalent of this. Well, if we look at our two lines, since they are never meeting, it implies something about their slopes. So in algebra, two lines are parallel. if and only if they have the same slope. So if this line has slope m1 and this line has slope m2, then in symbols, we say that their slopes are equal, or m1 is equal to m2. So that is our algebraic equivalent definition of parallel. So our next definition is in geometry. We say two lines are perpendicular if they intersect. a right or a 90 degree angle. So two lines are perpendicular if they intersect at a 90 degree angle. In algebra, two lines are perpendicular if and only if the product of their slopes is negative 1. So in other words, in symbols, m1 times m2 has to equal to negative 1. So that line has slope m1, and this line has slope m2. If they are perpendicular, when we multiply their slopes together, we will always get negative 1. This is often solved for m2. And if we do that, we have that m2 would then be equal to negative 1 over m1. And when it's written this way, we say their slopes are negative reciprocals. or opposite reciprocals, if that makes you happy. So those are our two 
definitions for parallel and perpendicular. If two lines are not parallel or perpendicular, then they are neither. So basically we have those two special cases, parallel lines, perpendicular lines. If it is not either one of those two, we throw them into the broad category of neither. Another name for the neither is the lines are called skew, but we will not use that line or those, that descriptor of those pair of lines in this class. So we will classify everything as parallel, perpendicular, or neither if it is not one of the first two. All right, so now that we are armed with those definitions, we can answer the following question. So determine whether the pair of lines is parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So in order to use either of the definitions or both of them, we have to use the slope. Well, in this case, our lines are both in slope-intercept form, so we don't have to do any work. Our m1 is going to be 1 third, and our m2 is going to be negative 1 third. So we check each of our things. So are they parallel? And the answer is no, because m1 does not equal m2, because one third is not the same as negative one thirds. So they're not parallel. So perpendicular, we need to also say no because m1 times m2 does not equal negative 1. And if we check, 1 third times negative 1 third equals negative 1 ninth, which is not negative 1. So our two lines are not perpendicular. So as we talked about above, if they're not parallel and they're not perpendicular, what's the only choice that's left? Neither. Let's go ahead and work this. So the first thing we need to do is isolate y in each of our equations. So subtracting 5x from both sides gives 3y equals negative 5x plus 11. Divide by 3, divide by 3, divide by 3. And we get y is equal to negative 5 thirds x plus 11 over 3. Similarly, we minus 3x, we minus 3x from each side, and we get negative 5y equals negative 3x plus 1. Divide by minus 5, divide by minus 5, and divide by minus 5. So we get y is equal to positive 3 fifths x take away 1 fifth. So now we can identify each of our slopes. So m1 is negative 5 thirds. And m2 is equal to positive 3 fifths. So we check for parallel. And once again, our answer is no, because negative 5 over 3 does not equal 3 over 5. We check for perpendicular. And this time, our answer is going to be yes because negative 5 thirds times 3 fifths gives us negative 15 over 15, which indeed equals a negative 1. So the two lines are indeed perpendicular. Using the alternate definition, their slopes indeed are negative reciprocals. Because if I change the sign of negative 5 thirds, it becomes positive 5 thirds, and I take the reciprocal by inverting the numerator and denominator, I get exactly 3 fifths, right? 
So indeed, these two lines are perpendicular. So, last example from this section says, write the slope-intercept equation for the line passing through the point negative 2, comma 1 that is parallel to the lines um, 3x minus 2y equals 5, and then write a second equation for the line passing through the point negative 2, 1 again that is perpendicular to 3x minus 2y equals 5. So basically, in this problem, we were asked to find the equation of two lines, one that's parallel to and one that is perpendicular to the line 3x minus 2y equals 5 that contains the point negative 2, comma, 1. So this is the same as the problems we were doing up here where we're trying to find the equation of a line. But we are going to be given one point, and we are going to be given a slope. But we are given the slope indirectly, which is we need to find the slope. So the first thing we need to do is find the slope of the given line. So we have 3x minus 2y is equal to 5. And we're going to find the slope just like we did in the previous example. So we minus 3x and we minus 3x gives us negative 2y is equal to negative 3x plus 5. We divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2, and we get y is equal to 3 over 2x minus 5 halves. So our slope is going to be positive 3 over 2. So now we really have two problems that we need to deal with. We have the parallel problem. So if the lines are parallel, we know they're going to have the same slope. So its slope is going to have to be 3 halves. For our perpendicular line, We know their slopes are going to be negative reciprocals. So our slope here, as I really don't need the subscripts, our slope here is going to be the opposite reciprocal. So the parallel line is going to have the same slope, which is 3 over 2. The perpendicular line is going to have the opposite reciprocal. So we change the sign, and we invert the numerator and denominator. So 3 halves becomes negative 2 thirds. Both of them are going to contain the same point, negative 2, comma 1. So now, after that extra bit of work finding what our slope had to be, this is the same problem we were doing in the earlier examples, where we need to find the equation of a line given a slope and a point. So using y equals mx plus b, we're going to have... 1 is equal to 3 over 2 times negative 2 plus b. So 1 is equal to negative 3 plus b. We add 3, add 3. So 4 is equal to b. So the equation of our line is y equals 3 over 2x plus 4. And that is the equation of the line parallel to the given line that contains the point negative 2, comma 1. Now we wish to rinse and repeat, but this time we are doing the perpendicular line. So starting off the same way, y equals mx plus b, we have 1 is equal to, we now have to use the perpendicular slope, so negative 2 thirds times negative 2 plus b, so that gives us 1 is equal to negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. So we have 4 over 3 plus b. We minus 4 thirds. We minus 4 thirds. And we get b is equal to negative 1 third. 
So then the equation of our line is going to be negative 2 thirds x take away 1 third. So we now found both the parallel and perpendicular to each of these lines. So let's go back and graph the original line first is y1. So we have 3 over 2x take away 5 halves. And then we have our line parallel to it, which is 3 over 2 x plus 4. And then we have our line perpendicular to it. which is going to be negative 2 over 3 x take away 1 third. So we go graph, we're like okay first line, second line they do look parallel, but then my third line, graphically does that third line look perpendicular to the first two lines? And the answer is no. And it turns out we're correct. It's just our calculator, when it defaults, does not use a square graphing ratio, which is really bizarre. But if you're ever using your calculator to help you verify geometrically that something is indeed perpendicular, what you're going to need to do is press your zoom key. And you want to choose choice number five, which says square. And when you do so, it's going to change the proportions of your window so that it's square, so that things will actually look perpendicular. So the idea is there's actually shear by default on your calculator because your window's not square. If you press your window key now, you'll notice that our x min and our x max are 15, and our y min and our y max are still 10. So by default, your calculator has a 3 to 2 window ratio, not a 1 to 1. So it will skew things by that value. It's called shear. So if you want to look at something geometrically, like in its true geometric sense, you have to change your graphing device to a square ratio. So you hit zoom and choose choice number 5. And when you do so, it then gives you a square reference point. So now, do the two lines actually look like they are perpendicular? And they do. They have a 90 degree angle. At least they appear to using the eyeball metric. So just be aware that by default, our calculator uses a 3-2 ratio, not a 1-to-1 -one ratio. So if you look at something geometrically, you may not be seeing what you think you are seeing.